First, it was the short tracks. Now there's a huge uproar over the current status of super speedway racing. We're going to talk a little bit about the current status of super speedway racing and why it is what it is and how we could potentially fix it. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Also, comment your thoughts on this video plus any improvements I can make on the channel. So this past weekend at Talladega Super Speedway for the Geico 500, we had a pretty crazy finish. But a lot of upset fans, including myself, over the racing we saw on Sunday. We've seen it for the last couple of super speedway races. It's all about fuel saving and getting the quickest pit stop possible. I'm not a fan of the way super speedway racing is going. And if you tuned into this video, I would assume that you are not too happy with the way super speedway racing is going as well. Honestly, it just seems like with this next-gen car, we either get the best racing we could possibly have or we get this. Complete and utter disappointment. But let's go through really quickly on how super speedway racing has changed over the years. Back in the day, the 1970s, the 1980s, even the 1990s, Super Speedway racing at that time wasn't at all what we know today. Back then, a lot of drivers and race teams didn't know much about drafting and how the draft works. Plus, just the way those stock cars were set up, they didn't work quite as well in the draft. Also, a lot of drivers and race teams did their setups a lot different. NASCAR didn't keep them in such a box like they do today. You often hear the term in NASCAR, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. And back in the day at Daytona and Talladega, this happened quite often. But then you got to the late 90s and the early 2000s. Then you got started what a lot of people would associate with super speedway racing. And that is the pack racing. We saw it in the early 2000s, especially three by three by three by three. Three wide throughout the whole entire field. It was pure excitement in the early 2000s. You saw every driver in the field going 100% throttle most of the time. And if they weren't going 100% throttle... It's because they weren't trying to wreck the driver in front of them or the whole entire field. Then a little bit later on, we ended up seeing the tandem drafting where you saw two cars lock bumpers and just go flying. It was a very interesting time for super speedways with the tandem drafting. It ended up creating one of the greatest finishes in Talladega super speedway history. Then after NASCAR told them to cut it out when it came to the tandem drafting. Come on now, cut it. Oh. <laughs> we went back to the pack racing, which was very similar to the way it was in the early 2000s. But then we had all these factors thrown in that I think has changed the way super speedway racing is today. Obviously, the biggest factor is these cars. These next gen cars work a lot different from what I've heard from the drivers. They feel a lot different in the draft. It's a lot more difficult to pass when they're going 100%, especially. So that's why we saw so much racing when they were going 50, 60% throttle, because it was a lot easier to pass and drivers were able to make their moves a lot easier. Another big factor would be the stage cautions. I think the stage cautions have a huge factor in these issues. And another factor that I don't think a lot of people are talking about, and I think it could help in a certain way when it comes to this problem, and that's giving bonus points back to the driver who led the most laps. If NASCAR would work on any one of three of these, it would greatly improve the super speedway racing. I've been over it before. I am not at all a fan of the stage cautions. I'm a huge fan of the stages. I think we should have stages and reward drivers that are running up front at certain points in the race. But in that same breath, stage cautions mess up the natural flow of the race. And when it comes to super speedways, and in my opinion, road courses as well, I will die on that hill when it comes to road courses not having stage cautions. It really messes with the whole strategy and the vibe of the race. And then when it comes to the next gen car, this is a lot more of an expensive fix and a fix that I honestly don't expect to happen. There's been a lot of talk over the last couple years, especially over the last month or two when it comes to the short track package that NASCAR should go back to their old ways and have a car developed 
for each type of race surface. Because right now what they're doing is taking any car anywhere. My disappointment is immeasurable. They could have a car running at Watkins Glen one week and then bring it to Daytona the next week if they really wanted to. And I just don't think that's right. I think they should have the cars set up where there's a short track car, there's a super speedway car, there's a mile and a half car, there's a road course car. Each car a little bit different when it comes to its parts and pieces. And if they decide to do that, Honestly, I would be okay with them even bringing back the dirt racing if they developed a dirt car. Like I mentioned, this is almost a pipe dream. I don't see this happening. This would be way too expensive for NASCAR, way too expensive for the race teams. I don't see this as a real possibility, but it is a suggestion. Then my last aspect that I think NASCAR could improve the super speedway racing is adding back bonus points. I feel like a lot of you don't even know that they took away these bonus points. I understand why they did it. With the stage racing, you get points from running out front for certain stages. You get the playoff point. I understand. But bringing it back where you get one point for leading a lap and maybe two or three points for leading the most laps, I think that would change things a lot when it comes to super speedways. Because you wouldn't have seen Michael McDowell lead all those laps. You would have saw his Ford teammates and other drivers try to challenge him for the race lead instead of riding in behind him. You would have seen during those long green flag runs of drivers driving at 50-60% throttle, you would have seen some of them try to make moves to the front to try to get that bonus point. I don't know how huge of an effect this would have had, but I think it would have changed things. I think the combination of that and then maybe taking away the stage yellows could drastically improve the super speedway racing overnight. I've seen a lot of frustrated drivers and frustrated NASCAR personalities talking about the super speedway racing. But at the same time, I see a lot of the newer race fans really enjoying the race they saw at Talladega because it definitely passed the eye test. I mentioned this in my race breakdown. If you had the race on mute when it came to Talladega super speedway, you probably enjoyed the race. If you were a new race fan when it comes to NASCAR, you probably enjoyed the race because you just don't know what you just don't know. What the f is this? I don't know. You can't love something that you've never seen. And I think that's the experience when it comes to a lot of these new NASCAR fans that actually really enjoyed Talladega Super Speedway. They're saying, oh, we loved the fuel saving. We liked the racing we saw on Sunday. Stop it. Get some help. But fans like myself who grew up in a completely different era when it comes to super speedway racing, the 3x3x3 three by three by three pack racing always on edge, is what I miss. That's why we didn't see any accidents till the end. Because none of these drivers were on edge, they were just kind of riding. All these drivers were pretty much just riding it around to get to their pit stop. That way they were able to fill it up on fuel and get the quickest pit stop they can possible. Pit stop. That was the pure focus of these drivers up until that caution with around 30 laps to go. And that's when things began to change. Because honestly, if they're going to do this, if they're going to do this fuel saving stuff, all of this sort of stuff, they should just run an 18, 20 lap shootout to the finish and call it a day. Because that's pretty much what it was. 150 laps of pretty much just riding it around, making sure you have enough gas to get to your next pit stop so you can get the quickest pit stop you can possible so you don't lose the draft. That was the focus. That was the only focus. I understand. I don't blame the race teams. I blame NASCAR. So NASCAR definitely need to figure out this super speedway package and super speedway racing. I hope they can do it sooner rather than later because it's really disappointing for the older fans that have been around for a while. I feel like every single day NASCAR is gaining a bunch of new fans, but at the exact same time, they're losing a little bit of their base fan base, which is very upsetting. But those are my thoughts on the current status of super speedway racing and how they could potentially fix it. Give me your thoughts in the comments on how NASCAR may improve the super speedway racing. Do you have any suggestions that I didn't mention? I probably missed something. Also comment, how do you feel about the super speedway racing? Are you one of those people that's actually fine with the way the super speedway racing is now? Or do you want it to go back to the way it was in the early 2000s and in the 2010s? Let me know in the comment section below. But that'll do it for this video. My name is Kyle, aka Racing Boy Short, saying peace.